I think about, and I'll get to my message in a minute. He told me to take as long as I wanted, but anyway, I'm not going to keep you too long. My father always said, blessed are the short-winded, they'll be invited back. So I won't be too long tonight. I'll tell you one more story, then we'll go. But see, you know, Bishop Blake, Bishop Brooks, when, when I took over in 1999 and the church started to really grow, it had like 6,000 people. My father had built a beautiful 8,000 seat sanctuary. And you know, some of this is the sovereignty of God. I'm not bragging on me. And, even when Bishop Blake was read, reading that resume, reading my introduction, I thought, I don't know who that is. I don't know how that happened. There's some of it's just the sovereignty of God, but the, the church began to grow and we filled it up twice and we needed a larger auditorium and you couldn't build out there in the part of town that, we, that Lakewood was at that time because the roads weren't big enough to handle a bigger auditorium. So we found a hundred acre tract of land about a mile from the the church there in Northeast Houston, right on the freeway. And boy, I thought, God, you just saved this property for us. I mean, you can't find a hundred acres in a big city like Houston in, in town very often. And you know, I felt like God has saved it. And I talked to the owner and he said, it's been on the market for over 20 years. You don't even need to write the contract. Just go do your soil samples, do your preliminary drawings and then we'll close on the property and boy I was just on cloud nine I thought that's the hand of God well about three months later we went to close on the property we had a meeting at eight o'clock we showed up at 7 45 the secretary walked out and said I'm sorry the owner sold the property last night I thought I can't believe it he gave us his word he said I didn't need to do that man I went home and I I told Victoria I said man we're stuck there's nowhere to, there's nowhere to grow. There's nowhere to, you know, no more property. And Victoria looked at me and said, listen, Joel, this means that God has something better. We're not going to get discouraged. We're going to keep moving forward in faith. She started preaching one of my messages. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to be discouraged, but we started looking a couple months later, we found another hundred acre tract of land. I thought it was even better. I say, God, I just know, you know, you did this for us. Do you know the same thing happened? About a month later, they sold it out from under us. You know, I just, I thought, God, where are you? I'm trying to do our best. We're trying to grow, trying to build your kingdom. But again, I'm not perfect, but I did what I'm asking you to do. I just kept moving forward. I said, God, I know you're still in, the th on con in control. I know you're still on the throne. See, faith is trusting God when life doesn't make sense. To say, God, it's not going my way. Twice they sold it out from under us. Do you know about three months later, a friend called and said, Joel, the Houston Rockets basketball team is moving out of the compact center. That would be a great location for Lakewood. When he said that, something came alive on the inside. I knew that was supposed to be ours. We were friends with the mayor. I called him that afternoon. I said, Mayor Brown, I hear the rockets are moving out. What are you going to, it was a city owned facility. I said, what are you going to do with the compact center? He said, Joel, I think the compact center would be a great home for Lakewood church. So we went, so that was the hand of God there. See, that was, that was on the main freeway. It, it was the premier facility in our city. Two million visitors a year come through the compact center. Not just having the building, but everybody knows where it was. So we knew that was a hand of God. It was a city owned facility. And one more thing about this story. I had to get 10, we had to get 10 votes from the city council members. Three years we worked and worked and worked. It was, they were going to lease the facility. Three years we only had, we had 10 votes. The day before the main final vote for us to get the facility, one of our votes decided to be out of town. He got so much pressure from the other side, he changed his mind. Well, him not being there would cause the deal to fall through. There were 14 council members, four of them were, five of them were against us now. There was a young Jewish council member, council member Goldberg. He had been against us for three years. A nice man, but I could not convince him. I did everything I could. I said, council member Goldberg, we're gonna be good for the city. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna uplift the city. We're gonna, I gave him my best sales pitch for three years. I couldn't change his mind. The night before the main vote, we thought it was done. The paper said Lakewood won't get the compact center. Council member Goldberg called me. He said, I'm changing my mind. I've decided to vote for Lakewood to have the compact center. Let me tell you, 
He said, but Joel, I didn't do it because you're persuasive. I did it because a friend of mine, an elderly Jewish lady that I haven't spoken to in over 20 years, she called me last night and she told me in no uncertain terms, you are to vote for Lakewood having the compact center. Let me tell you, he said, do you know this lady? I've never heard of the lady. Let me tell you, God has the right people lined up for you to put in a phone call right when you need it. I'm a crybaby, y'all. But you know what? When you think about the goodness of God, of what he's, what he's done in your life. See, God can make things happen that you could never make happen. I'm asking you tonight to take the limits off of God. See, God says when you believe, all things are possible. He didn't say if you can figure it out. If you have the money, if you have enough votes, if you get a good enough medical report, you don't have to figure it out. Our job is to believe. Our God is to say, God, you're on the throne. You own it all. You can do what medicine can't do. God's got the finances for you. He's got the buildings. There are moments of favor in your life if you'll just keep walking forward. Lord, honoring God. He's going to open doors bigger than you can imagine. Amen. How many of you are believers in here tonight and not doubters? I know you all are.